Every artist wants fame and fortune without losing their souls. Now, I've been to those crossroads a few times where I'd have to accept money that wasn't good money. Fortunately for me, I didn't accept that money because I kind of knew where the thing was going. Now, this makes a lot of artists fearful in the first place from even getting going, right? But the question is, is the industry in your way or do you really know yourself and know what you truly want out of this game? So in order to refrain from having to cross to the other side of those roads, we're going to talk about a few things coming up on today's episode of the Music Money Makeover Show. Hey, everybody, welcome back to the Music Money Makeover Show. Today's episode was recommended to me. When I recommend it, it was requested by uh, one of the viewers of the channel. She goes by Angel Brown 138 and she said, I think doing a video on music promotion versus promoting yourself and the fine line between the two would be great. Both are interchangeable in a way and having an online presence slash personality is important these days, but there's something about training your audience slash fan base to expect certain content from you that could easily go left or right, especially if you obtain some type of viral attention off of content that doesn't showcase your music. Now this non-musical task is expected of you with the new audience. This was your segue. It doesn't quite support your music the way you need it to, but you need the attention. Most will say all attention is good attention to help elevate, but it's very easy to get stuck at that point. How do you successfully skate on that fine line so that you can successfully promote your personality and music? Well, let's hop into that right now. So we're going to break a few things down here to keep it simple. All right. I'm going to answer those questions that she um, that she asked here. So what is music promotion? Music promotion is simply creating awareness of an artist's raw talent. Follow me and creating a refined artistic expression of the raw talent in a package form, which is the audio recording and letting the masses know that it exists in a material state. That's it. That's all there is to it. Right. Very simple. We create a product. We tell people about the product. We take the raw talent. We refine it. We put it in a package. We tell people about that product. Now, what music promotion used to look like, the act, the full act of it. Before the internet, music promotion was simple. The artist creates an audio product. They use the media outlets to promote the product. Okay, media outlets at the time included radio, magazine, newspapers, and television. The media promotional period lasted, usually lasted about three months after the release of the album, and media spots would continue throughout the promotional tour dates six months after the release of the album because at the time, there was a there wasn't many there wasn't much airtime between television and radio to promote your project. So if you didn't get the spots to get the interviews and the looks on TV, there was just no chance of you actually promoting your album well, right? Of course we had things like in stores and stuff like that, and of course the DJs would break records, but outside of that, you didn't have a long time to actually make a record break or an artist break, all right, before the next one had to come in because the time slot was taken over. And that's what it used to look like. Now, what does music promotion look like today? Today, music promotion is an ongoing process that uses some of the same media outlets if you're big enough, but mainly social media. There is no specific promotional period when using your own platforms your music promotion campaign is done using two methods of content. Watch this. Talent showcasing like you see on the left hand side. This is my guy Cook Ski right here. Follow him on Instagram and the artistic expression of the raw talent, which is on the right hand side. OK, now this means videos displaying your raw talents and videos displaying the artist, the artist expression of those talents, i.e. the music videos. It's very simple, right? That's it's just one of them is documenting the process of you in the studio. It doesn't really take much. You see, that's like an eye. You can really tell that's an iPhone. And on the other side, that's a real camera. And of course, you know, it's using my single shot, you know, ideas and methods. That's just really what it is. I mean, of course, the single shot is not really my idea. But, you know, he's that if you could tell that is one single shot and it's a little bit of editing on it, like zooming in, zooming out, a couple filters, couple things you know what i mean couple transitions but you see this one single shot anyway i don't want to dig too much into that that's how that goes this is base level music promotion without doing extra stuff like getting to the djs getting to getting to a uh, 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 radio spotify promotion all that stuff like that right this is strictly on uh social media now what is self-promotion self-promotion is expressing an awareness of who you are as a person 
to the world, but telling the story of yourself. Now, music fans love to know where you came from, how you got to where you are now and where you're going. Self-promotion digs deep into your character traits and your journey to create a self-image that you ultimately display to the public. Okay, I don't wanna jump ahead of myself, but this is necessary for the music to move, especially in nowadays climate. Now, what self-promotion looks like. Back then, the promotion of self came from radio, television, and magazine interviews. That's how we learned about, we either read it in a magazine, and we learned about the artists from there, and a little bit about you know who they are and where they came from, just a few paragraphs, or if they had a full write-up, then of course they were popping. Then you had television interviews if they got the chance to be on 106 in Park or TRL or just whatever, or local cable access channel or whatever it was. And then you had a radio interview and the, and the radio host would ask different questions, right? And so we got to learn about artists in that slow, very slow way, bits and pieces. This allowed the artists to kind of have a mysterious mystique about themselves. Not today. Fans ain't going for that. You know what I mean? All of this has merged into one. Now these interviews have become public and personal podcasts, blogs, or collaborations with other influencers online so that you can just talk about who you are, where you came from, where you're going, what your beliefs are, yada, yada, so forth and so on. Right. You can do this at a very high rate, which can begin to outshine the music. OK. These media outlets showcase your persona and story that you choose to display and tell to the public at any given time. The problem sets in when you start to go above and beyond the things that you believe in and the story and you really start to show out and do other things for the sake of attention. And this promotes your persona, leaving the music behind. All right. Now, why is self-promotion necessary? Self-promotion is necessary for fan relatability. It's just... We got to know, we got to feel you, man. But if fans cannot relate to you, they cannot promote you through word of mouth. The most valuable promotion anyone could ever ask for. That's just what it is. Selling music by itself is an extremely hard task to do without a mascot. So this is why promoting who you are is necessary. Because we need the artists to actually talk about themselves. That helps us get into the music a lot more. Okay. Now, how do you become a sellout? In the words of Will I Am, selling out is the action of selling outside of yourself or the normal product that you were supposed to sell, which is music. Okay. Now, this is normal nowadays for this to happen. However, it is maintained by making sure that whatever the artist is selling is on brand or authentic with the persona and artistic expression of the artist. So, you know, sometimes you see artists go do videos with Funny Marco. Or they do stuff that's just not something that they would really post on their social media, but it's all good. It's just for the advancement of their character traits. But then it takes a turn when you start to do things that is really outside of your character because maybe the music is not all that great or you just really need more attention or maybe the deal you signed was really, really bad. And, the, you know, you just need the attention to actually sell something else that is not relating to your music so that you can get the money that you need. This is when things start to go awry. Now, reaching status. I got to blink that out. Though selling outside of yourself and artistic expression is natural, becoming a usually happens out of desperation and the need for direction because one feels incapable of selling themselves. This usually happens for money or to refrain from failure or falling off in this industry. Fame is a hard habit to keep going, and if you were to drop your fame pills in the dirt, you do whatever to pick them up, dust them off, and keep taking them for fear of the loss of everything, because everything that you gain has been, been built on the attention that you've gained. Now, this is usually when you see artists making a fool of themselves in media stunts, selling products that sacrifice integrity, or just straight getting naked for money, and you know that that happens, okay? So, you don't want to be in this particular position. You got what I'm saying? Now, losing your soul. Imagine picking two flowers. One, you pull up the roots so you can transplant it. And the other, you clip the stem, disconnecting it from its roots. That's the equivalent of what's happening. The artist has accepted selling products and doing actions so far from their original character that they have lost their souls. This usually happens by a contract that they have to abide by for the things they were desperate for. Fame and money to satisfy their hunger. And when the contract comes due, they are going to have to do the actions that whoever is holding the debt request of them 
so that it can be fulfilled. So whatever you do in this game, you don't want to be stuck on the fame drug. That's actually where all of this is stemming from. I need so much fame because I don't have nothing right now. I'm desperate. You don't want to be there. Bad position to be in, which is why I say don't quit your day job. Save that money, fund, self-fund your career and begin to eventually quit your job so that your music can fund where you're going next. Now, what happens if you promote yourself too much? If you promote yourself too much, your public persona will lean to that image of yourself that you display. The public will not know you for your initial talent, which is music. So this is a very important statement because this answers the, the question of the, um, the viewer who, who stated it. When you're starting, you always want to push your narrative, which is your story, through your music and talent. So you don't stray too far away from who you are. The music allows you to write a story within it and tell that story. And people can say, hey, man, I don't know about that song or this song. Right. But let's say you go on a show or a podcast and you tell that same narrative, but it's without music. It can run rampant. All right. It can do a lot of damage. But when you do it in musical form, it has a little bit has a lot more control. It doesn't music just doesn't come out like that has to be done. People have to hear it. You know, then you drop it. Right. So the music can control the stuff that would just naturally fly out your mouth. You just say anything. Now, you, of course, you can't control everything, but this is how you balance that line where you can tell your narrative through song versus telling it raw, like on a podcast or in an interview or something like that. Right. That would just go viral and run rampant or you can control it with the music. That's that's kind of how you would do it. And so people who you find with narratives that are controlled through music are kind of like your higher ups, like your I'm just using rap, for example, your Kendricks and your J. Cole's and your Drake's of the world, where the storyline is so vivid that it's like, I know what it is you stand on because I hear it through the music. Some people don't know how to be that vulnerable in their music, okay? Now, what happens if you only promote your music? It's the flip side. Only promoting your music is great initially. However, music doesn't sell itself. And artists in their personality have always sold music flawlessly and always will. So even if you're in the sync space, I'm just talking to those who don't really who aren't the mainstream artists, promoting music by itself decreases relatability, which decreases word of mouth, which ultimately makes it hard to promote. Music is extremely hard to promote by itself. It's not impossible. It's just very hard to promote by itself. Now, how do you balance the two? Artistic expression is going to be what it is. However, to balance it and not become a clown while promoting yourself, you must create a narrative, something real PR agents have been designing for years. The narrative allows you to keep your story in check and lets you turn up the juice and dial it back and go in different directions. Controlling your story's narrative is the ultimate way to survive fame. It is what it is. Now, today's video is sponsored by the Music Money Makeover Show. And here's what they're talking about. If you're an artist, a producer, singer, songwriter, or new music exec who wants to get your record label or publishing company started in the next 60 days without searching all over the internet with the broken links and the how to's and the missing information, then I got you covered because we're going to get it done in 60 days or less. And we're going to build a strong LLC foundation. You'll learn how to play the game via contract so you don't get lost in the sauce out here. And you'll be able to collect your international and domestic record and publishing royalties without the middleman taking 15%. All the stuff in the bottom right hand corner is included within this course, right? And there's much, much more involved inside. Click the link below to get started today. Now, grab the free stuff below 10 major steps to increase your record labels profits. A free split sheet is included with the download and balancing the two will increase public acceptance, which increases word of mouth, which ultimately gives you access to the success you were seeking. But running wild with your personality gets you fame. It does removes your talent from the picture, but it can ultimately put you into status or cause a loss of your soul. Okay. So you don't want that to happen. want to be right over here in the nice little balance section. So if you were struggling with promoting your music and yourself at the same time, you now have the means to get this done and to keep your soul intact. So you can really elevate through this industry or through your career like you want it to, right? With, without too many heavy strings attached. Music Money Makers, if you make music, you should always make money. Log on to musicmoneymakeover.com, jump into the 60-day record label course below, download the free stuff below, book a call on musicmoneymakeover.com, and I'll see you next time. Peace.